Coming up on Unpacked. Like, oh my gosh, I have to work now. Yes. You know, I gotta do, I gotta be a parent. We were very close. You know, we had supper, we slept early. And he was 11 at the time. I was woken up by screams. Open the door, the flames hit me, both my hands, you know, immediately my hands started peeling. I told him the house was burned down and, and Nadif was inside. Losing your child to a fire while trying to save their life. Today's guest is here to share his story. Let's unpack. Clive Chabalala, famously known as DJ C Live, is a renowned name in music who has captured the hearts of fans across the country. While he has commanded the attention of many crowds, an incident that took the life of his son in 2015 is the one that he still replays. He is here to share more about that fateful day. This is part one of his story. Let's unpack. Sea Life, welcome to the show. Thank you so much for joining Thank us. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for inviting me. Now, I recall a couple of years back through Friends of Friends, because, you know, the Joburg Circles, we all sort of know Correct. each other, um, sharing the story to say, yo, you know, Sea Life went through this tragedy. And I could not believe it. It's like sometimes when you hear certain tragedies, you think, those are only things that happen in the papers. It's never things that happen to people we know. But in the case of yourself, it's something that happened to you. So maybe let's start at the point of, um, tell us about your son. What, what was he like? What was that day like when he was born? Tell us all those exciting things. You know, uh, he was conceived when I was, I was 20, 21, 22. Mm. You know, very young. And I was still a b-boy, you know, still very idealistic about a lot of things in life. And boom, I'm like, oh my gosh, I have to work now. Yes. You know, I gotta do, I gotta be a parent. I was, I was really scared, but when he was born, it just immediately all made sense. You know, you'd know this. Yes. <laughs> it immediately made it sense. It just clicks. Yeah. Yeah. Clicked and it was, it was really tough, but it was beautiful. It was mm -hmm. really beautiful. And, uh, you know, just him, me uh, 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 raising him with his mom was such an experience. You know, I, I, I finally became a man. You know, yeah. it was it was an exciting time. You know, and firstborn is a son, is is a boy, and you know, you know, you know how cliche it, it gets. Yes. You know, and uh, we were very close. Yes. You know, we were very close. Uh, I didn't realize how much he idolized me. You know, mm -hmm. and for me, that was such a a, a deep. Thing, you know, because I, I had my own fan right here. Yes. And I was his and fan as well. biggest fan. Biggest fan. Yeah. And I'm his fan as well, you know, because we used to do, we used to research music together. I'm like, okay, so what's the hottest song? What's the hottest song out right now? Yeah. It's like, Daddy, I think this, you should play this in the club. I think you should play, you know, this is my favorite song. You know, the school trips together, you know, it was, yeah. was, was amazing. When did you um, realize what his personality is like? Because... I only realized after having my own child that they have personalities like from the beginning. And did you see similarities between the two of you when he was a baby? Um, no, I, I didn't. I didn't see any similarities. You know, I was not trying to look for my, for me in him. Yeah. You know, um, I had to let him, you know, develop on his own and, and not try and, and live vicariously through my son, you know, because I understood that he was his own human. I, yeah. I, I got that and I really was keen to find out who he is. Mm. You know, I the first time I've, I discovered and discovered who he was was when I saw him interact with his sisters. Mm. You know, one from his mom's side and then from my from my side as well. He was the mediator, he was mm. the big brother. He really took on that role uh, wholeheartedly you know, and with, with so much joy, mm. you know, I'd, I'd watch him speak about his sisters and, and I'm like, who is this child? I remember I, I said, I said to my, I said to a few people, I was like, who is this child? Who, yeah. What's going on here? And, you know, we Ubuntu, you know, and he was very loving and, and, and I didn't get that because I mean, I'm just, you know, me and my feelings were just not mm. together, you know, <laughs> at some point, you know, but he was just so in touch, so gentle, so, you know, he was different from what from what I was at his age. Yeah. Yeah, because yeah. I, was, I was in the streets, I was 
I was just a Zulu boy about life, you know. But here he was. What What was the family set up at the time? Because you've mentioned that uh, he had sisters. Yes, yes. Uh, were you and his mom not together? We were anymore? not together anymore. What was that that set up like? So his mom had uh, his mom had gotten married, and uh, I had my own thing going on, mm. you know. But obviously. The families were constantly in touch, and yes. you know, because we understood, we understood the mission. You know, we understood that we had to raise these kids. Mm. You know, so automatically, her other kids became my kids as well. Yes. You know, and you know, we'd bounce between the two families, and he was the constant uh, connection between us. You mm. know, and you know, we we really made him feel like he 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 was the man of the house, so yeah. to speak. Yeah. You know. Um, yeah. So the relationship was great. Talk me through what, um, you know, that specific day and the events leading up to that moment. You know, I'm very, I'm, I'm not really religious, mm. you know, but I've been through my own experiences with religion and whatnot. But that Sunday, that Sunday, I'm not about signs and premonitions and whatnot, yeah. you know, but that Sunday was, was the strangest ever because with my partner at the time, I remember she was out in the washing line, hanging the washing, and we mm. had a conversation. And I just got into this very deep mode where I discussed the well-being of my kids and taking my kids out of that particular area into a better life mm. and whatnot. You know, I, I'm, I'm sure I went on for about an hour. You know, it was it was a it was a teary-eyed conversation. Mm. You know, and I don't know what triggered it. I do not know what triggered it, and. You know, we had supper. You know, uh, my son was living with with me at the t with us at, at the time because his mom had passed away in 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 Feb. Goodness. Yeah, uh, his mom had passed away in Feb. Now we in July. You know. So, so just to do a quick detour. Yeah. Um, what had happened that his his mom had passed away, which obviously is such a tragic thing On for a own. child to go through. Yeah. You know, it was it was very, it was a very heavy period for me. Uh, because now I have to deal with a child that has lost his mom. I mean, just the thought of losing my own mother is, yeah. is, is just unimaginable, you know. Um, she passed away, uh, you know, I, I'm not sure what the circumstances were, but it, was, it seemed like it was a domestic issue. Um, and suddenly he had to now come and live with his father, mm. you know, and... I do not know how to take care of a child who's just lost his mother. Mm. How do you do that? And you had never been up to that point a full-time parent. No, I, I hadn't. You were always co-parenting. Always co-parenting. Yeah. But I had been looking forward to a time where we would live together. Mm. But the circumstances, you know, alas. Mm. Um, so the six, the, 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 those few months we were together, you know, it was, it, it was, it was really tough. Mm. It was really tough because. He's a, he's a young boy. He doesn't uh, he doesn't show emotions much, you know. I was just afraid that at some point it will show in a very drastic way because he was always like, no, daddy, I'm okay. Mm. You know, he didn't speak about his emotions much. Um, I don't remember him crying, mm. you know. I don't remember him saying he misses his mom, you know. I'm sure he did, but it was never a moment uh, that was poignant enough for me to say I remember, mm. you know. So that was even more tough for me because now I understood that this boy's going through a lot, but now yeah. how do I get through to him? Yeah. You yeah. know? Um, so, you know, as, as time went, things were getting better and better, you know, and, and I was really looking forward to a new day and you start with him, you know, and um, that Sunday, you know, we had supper, we slept early, you know, he came to the edge of the bed as usual. Uh, he always loved to say, he always loved saying Coco Dreams, you know, it was a th thing between him and his stepmom. Mm. Coco Dreams, good night. Uh, I found it cute, you know, that they had their own thing, you know. And he was 11 at the time. Yeah, he was okay. 11 at the yeah. time. Um, I was exhausted, he said goodbye, at the edge of the bed, went to sleep, and when I woke, I was woken up by screams. Mm. You know, she, uh, his stepmom is, is, is sleeping beside me, she's screaming. I, I wake up, I'm, I do not know what's going on. I can hear him screaming my name. Um, I got up, you know, and I, I mean that I'm still during my sleep and I woke mm. up and I ran into his bedroom. I'm not even paying attention to what's going on. Mm. I, I couldn't smell anything, I, you know. I opened the door and, 
you know how backdraft works. Open the door, flames hit me, both my hands, you know, immediately my hands started peeling, you know, skin was just, you know, sorry to be graphic, but... No, I, and I think it's important to be that real yeah. because I think um, sometimes we're not aware of the little details because we're so focused on the big part, which is we're just focusing on the loss. Yeah. We're not seeing the small yeah. other details of things that we may not be uh, paying attention of or be aware of. So I think it's important. And, and, and it's the it. detail which, that, that, that I remember very clearly, you know, it's a detail that keeps coming back to me over and mm -hmm. over again, you know. So when I opened that door, I got hit by flames. Yeah. You know, face, hands... I immediately ran outside. I'm not even thinking. Immediately ran outside. So so the flames were coming from, from his, his room. From his room. Yeah. You could hear him screaming. He, but... he was screaming my name before I got to the room. By the time I got to the room, he wasn't screaming. Mm. You know, he wasn't screaming. But the, 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 the uh, smoke was so thick. Mm. You know, I'm, I'm assuming he was choking in it at the time. Yeah. You know, because the way it hit me, it was it was the flames and the smoke. It was really, really uh, heavy. Yeah. I immediately ran outside uh, to grab the hose pipe. I mean, who does that? But I'm not thinking. You know, I'm mm. I'm I'm in I'm I'm in this panic mode. You know, grab the hose pipe. I open up the tap. Immediately when I, when I run back, you know, uh, as hose pipes do, it tangles up. Frustrated. By the time I get back into the house, it's a matter of seconds. I get back into the passage. The whole entire ceiling is falling. Wow. So it's his door, my partner standing on the other side, the ceiling is falling, it blocked his door. His room is the only one in the house with burglar cars. Yeah. You know. So as in um, what was there to protect outsiders from coming Ended in up. was now preventing you from being able to enter. The irony, to right? So the ceiling has fallen. Yeah. Um, and you said your partner now is on, on this other, side. She's on the other side of the flames uh, between the, his door and mm. myself and the ceiling is falling and I can see on the other side. Mm. Mm. So now I'm stuck in a moment where I need to save someone, you know, mm. I need, need to make a decision, which in, in hindsight, I realized it wasn't really my decision to make, mm. you know. Mm. I need to get out who I can. So what did you do then? I ran to the back of the house, you know, um, lucky enough the kitchen door was open. Broke, I broke some windows, I don't know what I was thinking. Uh, you know, she, my partner eventually got out. And within a matter of seconds, the entire house was, was, was burning to the ground. Wow. Yeah, I, I walked out, it was, it was the middle of winter, it was freezing, mm. you know. I walked out, you know, like somebody who just lost their mind and trying to make sense of what just happened. In, in that time, and obviously um, when you're in the moment, everything is happening so quickly, but yeah. I, um, I'm assuming it's so quick, but it's also in slow motion, as in the details and things that you you um, notice and pick up and sort yeah. of implant into your memory. What did you know and understand was happening at that time? Like, did you, did you know that this is bad? Did, did that cross your mind? No. It, it, well, the magnitude of the situation did. You know, it, 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 was, it was right there. Mm. You know, I, I'm dealing with something that I'd never dealt with before, something so majestic, you know, and I use that term deliberately because that's, I think, in my traumatic moment, something needed to make sense. And for me at that point as non-religious as I am, when I opened that door, I felt as though, because the fire was roaring so loud. Yeah. It felt as though an angel had swooped down and I had tried to intervene and I got my hands smacked, you know, like, hey, yes. stay away. That's what wow. it felt like to me. And that's what, at that point, that's what it made sense. And that's the only thing that made sense. I'm like, wow. And in fact, I remember saying that. I was like, wow. I walked out laughing. Wow. wow, you know, um, because it was a moment of insanity. You know, I, I couldn't make sense of it. Mm. I walked out and I sat on the on the pavement and I and I really laughed. I was like, wow, <laughs> what has just happened? What has just happened? You you so you sat on the pavement and you basically were watching this house collapse. Uh, no, in the flames. house was behind me. The house was behind me. I didn't want to look at it. Um, and at this point, um, there wasn't. 
anything that looked like an opportunity to try and do something else. There was else. nothing. I mean, where, where do you go? The entire house is falling apart. Mm. If you if you run in, you're gonna you I, I'd surely die as well. Yeah. You know. Um, but also one of the things you know that that really um, conflicted me at the at the time is, wow, what do I do? Okay, let's say we survive past this. You know, he survives past this. What kind of life do we mm. do we have after this? You know, can I live with myself after this? You know, mm. um, it almost felt like it was a decision that I had to make. You know, and and I've I I const I, for years I felt so bad because I felt as though it was a de decision I had made, and only to look back and when I started deal dealing with it that mm. no. Even if you wanted to go in, where would you go? Where, how would you get in, in, in inside that house that was burning down? What would you do? And I mean, I'm thinking about what you said about the host pipe and you saying who does that. And realistically, m even the most trained of persons in a situation of absolute crisis, everything that you have learned can out go out, out the window. 100%. So I'm curious to know... Um, from a hindsight perspective, yeah. knowing what you know now, what could you have done? Because you're saying the host pipe was not the smart thing. What What do you think the smart thing could have been? Look, I mean, I, I could have walked in there with a, with a blanket, you know, mm -hmm. and try and fan the flames out, you know, mm -hmm. and, you know, uh, try and, and, and get in there with, with some sort of protection for my breathing, you know, mm -hmm. so the smog doesn't get to me, you know. Um, <sighs> In hindsight, I, I could have I could have had a fire extinguisher in the house. Mm. Have a fire extinguisher in the house because you're gonna need it, mm. you know. But we, we don't think that far unless we've gone through it, you know, mm. or unless we work with fire, you know. But until an, something has happened, it's it's a lesson uh, for future so that mm. you learn how to protect yourself. And but uh, until you've gone through it, mm. Mm. it's just one of those. So you sit uh, on the pavement. Um, I'm assuming just delirious with what yeah. is happening. Where's your partner at the time? She was trying to get the dogs out the house as well, out the yard, trying to get the keys for my car. You know, she was she was all over the place as well, you know, uh, trying to call an ambulance. There was a lot happening. I, I remember I was I was on the phone with my with my mom and my sister, you know, and I What was, did you say to them? I remember telling them what had just happened. Mm. And they, you know, it must have come as a shock to them, of course. Did, did you yeah. say to them, um, the house has burned down? Um, yeah. A, a, is that all you said and you uh, left them to no. assume? Or what did you say? I, I told them the house has burned down and, and Nadif was inside. Nadif, mm. my son, was inside. We couldn't mm. get him out. Mm. Um, and this is before now the paramedics and... Before the paramedics they, came. Everybody arrived, yeah. yeah. That was before they came. And uh, I remember that conversation. It was, I mean, how do you tell... How do you tell your mom your, her grandson has just passed away? Mm. In her... In, 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 the, in the house that has just gone up in flames. I mean, that is the wildest thing ever. Yeah. You know, that doesn't happen to us. That happens to other people, you know? Yeah. Um, and what what was their uh, their response like? Your mom and sister. I um, mean, they were they were shattered. They were they were. My sister couldn't believe it. You know. Was there part of you that had even the smallest glimmer of hope? There was. There was. Mm -hmm. There was. The I mean the the the, the fire marshals came. And. And this was about how long after? I I can't say. Mm -hmm. I really can't say. Um, but they came. And they started, you know, doing their thing. And the, the, the one farm marshal uh, came and she said to me, we can't find him. You know, I'm hoping, I'm hoping he had, he had somehow gotten out and he went through the back and he would suddenly appear. Hey, daddy, I'm fine. Yes. You know, that's what I was hoping for. And and what did they mean by we can't find him? As in the place you said he is. In this room. That they, the flames are down. They went in and looked and they can't find they him. Couldn't find, they yeah. couldn't find him, you know. It was only after a while where they came back. They're like, yeah, we found him. Yeah. Mm. 
there was no way I was gonna go back into the house. And and my the last image of my son being that, there was no way, you know, mm. I, I, I refused. I was going to ask, did yeah. they ask you if you wanted to go see? You know, I, I could have gone in, uh, they didn't ask. I could have just ran, ran back inside, but I refused, mm. you know, I mean, I don't think I'd be able to live with myself. Did did your partner go in to look? No, she didn't. Mm. She didn't either, you know. Um, yeah, it was a tough one. It was, it was really tough, you know. I only began dealing with it, I think, maybe five years later. Mm. You know, five years later, and I really started dealing with it. When, when the fire marshals were there, um, I'm assuming there's a part of you that, like, you need an explanation. And obviously, these type of situations require time to get investigations done and all of those things. Was there anything they could tell you on the day? No, funny enough, I didn't. I didn't. I didn't need an explanation at all because, you know, um, for me, there was that constant, you know, some people call it paranoia, but there was that con constant worry about that heater uh, next to his bed, you know, mm -hmm. he, had a, he had a heater next to his bed. And I had asked him, I told him to clean up his room that day, and because his room was always a mess, you know, our boys are, you know, um, it was a mess. And I, I had really spoken to him that day, I said, hey, listen, clean up your room, you know, because I thought the heat is too close to the bed and mm -hmm. it might just catch, a f or catch fire. But it's not something that you actually see happening. Mm -hmm. it's, a, it's just a thought, like, hey, that might catch fire, you know? Excuse me, move it aside, you know, uh, keep it far away from there, but you never think, hey, let me get a fire extinguisher just in case that happens, you know what I mean, mm -hmm. and plan ahead. Mm -hmm. um, so when this happened, I didn't understand how because his room was clean that day, but I also understood that there was that imminent danger, mm -hmm. you know, which I had kind of addressed with him, you know. Mm -hmm. um, by the time the investigation was done, this was um, less than a month later. Uh, 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 the insurance company found that it, it wasn't the heat, it was something else. But wow. Yeah, uh, electricals and whatnot. But according to me, from, from what I know and understood, we've never had an electrical issue in the house. Mm. You know, there's never been an issue at all. There's, it's that heater. You know, that's what I... Hazard. I mean, I figured he, he kicked his blankets off the bed and, you know, that's what happened. Mm. Um, besides... It, it, it's not going to help me. Mm. He's gone. What's an investigation going to do for me? You know, um, I don't need another reason to not sleep. I don't need another, another, a, another a battle to fight now, you know. Mm. You know, um, as it were, with, with, with such traumatic situations, we want to really deal with it, deal with ourselves, and deal with the trauma and move on. You know, we don't want to dwell in that moment, dwell in whose fault is it and what this and that, you know, because, you know, I was, as, as funny as it sounds, I was lucky that I was there. Mm. I, I, do you say I don't have questions in my head. I don't have... You don't feel like you need closure? N n not, not really, mm. no. But I was there, you know, that for me kind of gives me that closure. I saw everything for what, it, for what it was. I saw everything happen, you know? So I, I, it's not like somebody who wasn't there and they have these wild ideas, but please, uh, uh, you know, and, and they keep asking for an explanation. Tell me what happened, mm -hmm. who was there? And you try to picture this entire thing. I was there, I saw it, you know? And, you know, it's, 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 it was a moment that I'd ne I'll never forget, you know? It was, it was something huge. You, you speak quite a bit, obviously, um, of the trauma of losing a mm. child, but there's the trauma of having, you know, been within a burning house. That in itself is its own trauma. What did, you know, what kind of injuries did you experience mm -hmm. and what was that um, aftermath like? Because it wasn't just your son that was gone, it was also you were hurt. Yeah. Look, I was lucky to to have a partner that that uh, took care of me at the time. You know, um, I sustained burns to my face. You know, just uh, singes to my, to my nose and lips. It wasn't that bad, but both my hands were, were I couldn't use them. You know, I had I had to get stitches and staples and 
massive bandages on both my hands. Mm. You know, I, the left hand doesn't show it, but the right hand still got scars. Mm. Um, I couldn't really drive. Lucky enough, the car's automatic, so it was, I don't know, I have to change stick, you know what yes. I mean? Uh, but she was there. My, my uh, partner at the time helped me through a lot, helped me through a lot, you know. God bless her soul. Um, there was a there was there was a few months where I had to be helped through everything, you know. Mm. Um, it was weeks, not months. Sorry. And if she was not there, I I don't know what I would have done. Mm. Yeah. Next time on Unpacked. We all go through loss. We all go through trauma. You're a mess, bro. Go and get help. And especially as black people, we take the taboo out of death. The natural thing to want to do is not speak about it because you're not ready to deal with the pain. I've got a newfound appreciation for Abandu through the material things and everything else. All that's meaningless. Just love hard. for watching Unpacked with Rilip Khile Mamoja. Make sure you subscribe to my channel where you can get to watch more episodes. But more importantly, you can be part of our online community. Comment down below, share with us who you'd like to see on the show, what story you'd like us to discuss. We love engaging with you. Keep it coming and don't forget to subscribe.